Hello, good evening everybody. It's been a while since uh, my last game, but my classical gaming here uh, in Witcher. But I guess it was worth it because now we have a very unorthodox opening, the one D3 opening, so these were the first moves of the game, if you wonder how exactly did we got into this position. So, uh, this is now, I believe, to be a standard opening position, opening theory. So basically I play the move bishop d6 to protect the pawn on e5, but now if white takes on c6 and then takes on e5, he will lose the knight on a3, so I'm not really uh, too bothered about this. Played knight c4, and now I shall protect my pawn with d6. Now we are getting into this very uh, interesting type of positions. So, Black has a pair of bishops and he has a very nice pawn center. But White has his own trumps as well. He has this potentially very strong bishop on b2. So if one day White will manage to break with f4, he might be happy. But I think he made an inaccuracy when he put it, when he placed his knight on f3 rather than e2. So let me see if I have a way to exploit it. The problem with the position for black is that it's not entirely sure, uh, I'm, at least it's not entirely clear uh, what is exactly black's plan. So he could, I could just develop pieces with bishop e6, but what am I trying to achieve? This is the real question. So let's play c5 for starters. Now, I like this pawn structure, everybody's protected and very solid. Now if perhaps one wants to place his pawn on e4, so I think it's the time to develop the bishop. I don't really want to never to play the move such as e4 because it immediately opens up and it's a long diagonal for the bishop. So I, I actually want to keep the pawn on e5 so to restrict it. Perhaps my plan for the next move would be to move the knight from f8, from f6, I'm sorry, so something like knight d7 or knight e8, and to push the pawn to f5. I believe this plan is quite sensible. I don't really want to take the knight on c4 because, because it strengthens his uh, hold in the center. I think either either white has to go for the plan with f4, but it's slightly, let's say, uh, slower than it should be, because the knight should be on e2 right now, but now we play the move e4, which I have to say I really don't like for him. Because now, first of all, it fixed my pawn structure, I don't have double pawns anymore. Now I have kind of a pleasant choice here. I can spoil a spawn structure and the price of my two bishops advantage. I can also just play a move like e4 and to keep the game more closed. Tough choice. Let's go with the center. I kind of kind of like this plan. And now the knight will move, and I still, I can still do this damage in pawn structure, but I'm not sure if I really want to do it. I have a kind of a principle choice, whether I want to keep my bishop on the board or to exchange it. Not an easy choice to make. Uh, 
Let's go with this move, Bishop G4. Not entirely sure whether this is really the best move, but yeah, I kind of wanted to force him to play this move F3, and now, and this is the kind of position I wanted to get. Now we exchanged one more pair of pawns, so my bishops are getting stronger. Uh, because when pawns get exchanged, the position gets open. Oh, black should be slightly better thanks to his pair of bishops. Maybe I could do more than this position. I don't know, suddenly I look at it and start wondering, but I'm very solid here. I kind of like this move, knight d5. Because white wanted to push his pawn to d5 himself and open up the diagonal for the bishop. So actually the knight on d5 is doing is actually a good blocking job, let's say. And if he tries to move his knight somewhere in order to push the pawn on c4, I can always play the knight to e3. So it's not too impressive. Queen d2 is logical. Let's develop the rook finally. I think it's about time. Let's develop the queen also. Once again, black should be, um, let's say, very slightly better thanks to his um, to bishops, but. Also, white is extremely solid, so he has his own arguments. Now I think I have a nice tactical possibility. So basically I want to play bishop g5 and skewer the queen and the knight, but first I need to get rid of the knight, so I believe I win some material here. Also, it's important that on knight takes d5 I will recapture with the bishop maintaining my material advantage and I believe white is in trouble yeah now bishop g5 just checking that I didn't miss anything seems like everything is in place now this knight is under attack three times and I I believe white is just losing here a full piece it's not even or maybe it will, will no, it's it probably it would be an exchange at the end. Still should be enough to win for black of course. Three and let's just grab it. Before it runs away. Yeah, I believe why it should be dead lost right now. This is a very um, very uh, easy position for black to win. It's not only that uh, I have the exchange up, also this is in general a very good position uh, for rooks because it has a lot of open files to operate on. Yeah, now let, let's try to exchange the queens. Let's just make, to make my job as easy as possible. So now I'm threatening something like queen e3 or penetrating on one of those three squares. And I believe I can exchange queens right now with queen e3. Of course I can also be more ambitious and try to keep the queens on the board. This is actually also possible. Now let's be a bit tricky, let's play queen e4. Because now I'm not only threatening the queen, I also might grab another tasty pawn here on c2. Yeah, so now it's really the kind of technical part of the game. Yeah, queen c3, but now once again if I want, I can exchange the queens. Yeah, let's, let's, let's just exchange the queens, it should be should be quite easy. Yeah, let's play rook e4. I want to stabilize my rook on the light square. 
and now we move to the next part. So now my job would be to create a fast bone, probably on the king side, using my fast bones, using my sorry my my extra one bone on this side of the board. Let's get the king closer to the action. G5 looks good. So basically my next move my next moves are very easy. I just push, push, push my pawns until one of them becomes a queen and then for sure you will resign. Oh gee. <laughs> I talked too early and I blundered. Yeah, actually I deserve it. I really should have concentrated a bit more. Uh, yeah, now I made my job actually quite more, quite a bit more, <laughs> more difficult. It's really funny. It was a completely winning position. Oh gee. Yeah, let's go for this one. And now we will take. Whoa! Well, right, now the white has. Reconnected fast bones. What the hell have I done? It's really ridiculous. If I would if I would lose this one, it would be really painful for me, but I will try to gather myself and at least not to lose this one. That's, that's really ridiculous what happened right now. So my threat right now is rook to b2, trying to grab the pawn on b3 with a check. But I'm really scared why it might start pushing his bones right now straight into my face but I believe I should be okay I mean I'm really not sure about whether I can win this position anymore but should be should be like safe enough not to lose who knows Kinky 3 looks like a good move. I don't have much of a choice. I have to go for this pawn in order to have my own fast pawn. Not too much of a choice there. Really made my job very difficult. Yeah, nothing to think about there. One of my problems is my king is cut off from the pawns. I, if my king was on d7 right now, everything would be so much easier. But what if I just push my pawn a4, c6, a3, c7? You see how cruel life is? This guy is promoting with a check. So. This is not even an option for me. Okay, let's let's give a check. Okay, now I think he made some mistake. Now I can play king e4. Yeah, this ensures me a draw, but not more, because he will take my rook also. But at this point, I, I'm really not sure if I if I have more than a draw. Maybe I do. Yeah, I'm a bit a bit not sure whether I should play on or not. Thinking before. 
is anyway inevitable, so let's go for it. Yeah, threw away just a dead winning position. Yeah, so if I want to play for a win, I have to go for rook b1. This becomes extremely tricky. If I just want to draw, I can take on d5 and it's just a draw. What should I do? What should I do? Okay, yeah, let's go for the win. I'm really not sure that it's a smart decision. But, you know, you only live once, they say. Yeah, he played the right move. I'm just one tempo short from breaching his pawn. Yeah, so now if I want to keep, I, I probably have to go. No. I have to go from G1 in order to stop the pawn. So rook G1, C7, G8, Bishop E7, C8, D6. No, I lose there. This is really painful, but I think I'm losing. Or maybe I'm not. I probably am in time, but I'm still losing. very painful for me. <laughs> How did I manage to get myself into so much trouble? I just don't see any other move than Rook G1, so anyway I have to go for it. I think I see the draw, so I see it. now why do we place the pawn to c7? I will play my rook to g8, he will play bishop e7, he will try to cut me off on d8, I will have to then play rook to c8, he will play his pawn to d6, I will play king d5, this is all forced. Yeah, I think I just in time to reach with my king to safeguard my pawns just in time yeah so what should have been an, a very easy win for me actually turned on to be <laughs> a very tough battle uh, so not to lose the game Hopefully, I'll manage. I don't know exactly what is my opponent thinking about so much because I think the next moves are practically forced from both sides. Whoa! 
G3, what is this? Oh my god, I completely forgot about this option. Oh, this is so risky for him. Did he actually calculate all of this? I think he blundered. I have, I think I have this check here. So, oh, I'm, I'm really confused. Maybe I am losing here. Jacks. Yeah, so draw is fine with me, that's for sure. His bones are way too strong. So apparently draw is fine with him also. Yeah, so he decided to take the draw, but Jesus, this was extremely intense. What, what, what went on there? So, computer says that this is a draw. Why is this a draw? What if I don't understand? What if white goes this way? So this check. This king is two. Oh, he cannot go there because now I can just take and I have rook to c1. Oh, yes. This is a draw. What the hell did I do? So, let's see. So, oh. Oh, bishop. Oh my god, this is crazy. In this position, I was only thinking about bishop to e7, but he has bishop f8, wow. This is such a crazy move. So the point is that now he's threatening to queen, and now my the pawns just beat the rook. Wow, this is unbelievable, actually. This is a very beautiful position. Wow, yes. I, I only saw bishop to e7, uh, but then I saw that I'm just in time to play rook c8, d6, and king d5. And what is lucky for me that if the pawn goes to d7, I take the pawn with a check. So I'm actually winning. So white plays something, and then my king manages to block his pawns, and then, okay, at least I'm not losing. But yeah, bishop f8 completely <laughs> forgot about this one, apparently he is also. Yeah, so <laughs> I was dead winning, so yeah, minus 4, okay, the move h5 was so ridiculous. Yeah, I immediately dropped 3 points of my advantage, but yeah, th th that's what happens sometimes. You play one mistake and then just you play more mistakes after it because you're kind of still shocked from your first mistake and it's such a pity really it was just a so much easy easily winning position yeah he played the opening not so well i think i found decent moves yeah 95 is the best move now i just have a slight advantage but uh, he blundered with 93 and i found this tactic you know what, in a way, if I would not blunder, we wouldn't have this beautiful uh, uh, variation uh, at the end of the game. So, uh, yeah, in a, in a way, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm satisfied with, with how the game ended. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. It was a very intense ending for the game. Hope you enjoyed it. See you next time. Bye-bye.